getting the actual academics engaged with industry is one of the big challenges, and trying to get your, your IP out is a, is a huge part. So we're here, and uh, hopefully this is of interest. So um, Cloud Lightning has uh, eight partners, and the two industrial partners are Intel uh, and Maxler. Uh, so everyone knows who Intel is. Uh, and Maxler is a uh, Dataflow engine uh, process provider based in, in, in London. And um, they primarily work in the financial services sector at the moment, uh, designing uh, solutions based around uh, a high performance processor for, for uh, data science type jobs. Um, and then uh, there's uh, six universities, there's uh, UCC and DCU uh, based in Ireland, um, and then there's NTNU in Norway, which is a, a HPC lab there that uh, works primarily with Statoil and Syntec uh, projects, uh, IAT in Romania, and then CERT and DUTH in, in Greece, uh, we've worked on our simulator. And I know uh, one or two people were, uh, I was telling them about, about the simulator, and John might touch on uh, the simulator, which is one of the things out of uh, Cloud Lightning that, that is a very interesting output that we've open source, which is a, um, a hyperscale uh, cloud simulator that will actually support uh, simulations uh, to a, a significant order of magnitude uh, better in terms of tasks and nodes than the existing clouds in platform that, that, that was used often for simulation, but also supports conventional cloud simulation and self-organizing simulation and also different types of resources, so CPU, GPU, uh, FPGAs, and uh, many integrated cores. So uh, we've open source that, that's sort of kind of an interesting thing. So um, I'm going to talk about research that we've been doing on the HPC market, particularly future uh, of HPC in the cloud. And, uh, you know, I, I want to just give the background when we started looking at study, you know, we see this, this big market, the HPC market's huge, uh, 21 billion euro market, and, you know, many of the segments in the market you guys, are, some of you guys are involved in, some of you guys are selling services into. And uh, interesting is that it's a, it's a huge market, but from a business perspective, it's kind of interesting for me was, uh, like, so in Ireland, it, it's a non-market. We, you know, like, uh, we went to visit uh, Tokyo, and uh, we went to two site visits uh, in Tokyo Institute of Technology and University of Tokyo, and they spend more in probably in a month on HPC than we do in the whole Republic of Ireland on HPC. And, uh, I, you know, I was, I was joking, I said, how many users do you have? And he goes, uh, users in terms of what? I said, in terms of high-performance computing services, Oh, 9,600. And I was going, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. and, and, and so that's just put into context. That's all our computer science students in Ireland. So, so yeah, we were kind of going, oh, that's very, very impressive. So, um, so just, you know, uh, like, uh, you know, it, it's a huge market. And what, what's quite, quite interesting is, is the challenges and then looking at cloud. So, you know, the challenges that, that IDC are reporting is, well, it's hard to use that deep IT knowledge. We know that it's expensive. A big thing is inaccessibility to individuals and SMEs. So, you know, uh, largely if you work uh, using HPC clusters, you, know, you're, you typically have access to a university or to a partnership. But it's not, it's not a market really for people who are starting up lots of startups and saying, well, you know, I have access to things. And even, uh, and I'm going to say the words now, it's, it's like, even if you're true HPC or not true HPC or whatever place you sit in the spectrum, you know, if you're an animation studio or a small animation studio in, in, in the UK or wherever, uh, you know, and you're using, you know, a, a 20 grand workstation to process animations now, you know, you're taking days and weeks to do something that actually can be done on the cloud faster. Uh, you're certainly not buying HPC workstations, you know. And, and one of the big challenges here is when we talk about increasing availability and accessibility to uh, small to medium sized enterprises, which are, you know, uh, anything from 15 person micro enterprises to 250 people, they aren't really getting access to high performance computing. You know, they, they may be doing projects with people, but they're not uh, innovating and they're not creating the new breakthroughs because they just don't have access to that equipment. So one of the things is, how do you stimulate that? And the other thing is, uh, high performance computing infrastructure is, is largely inflexible. You know, I mean, it's, it's configured, it's specialized, and then every time that you want to reuse it, you have to configure and specialize again. And most HPC workloads are not ready to roll on today's cloud architectures. And, and, and that's the reality. And um, there's some additional nuances around, but, the, but 
there's nothing there that I don't think people would largely disagree with. Um, HPC in the cloud, uh, what's quite interesting is it, it, it's a big, small market. So put it in fact, it's the smallest segment of the, the high performance uh, computing market. And HPC is the smallest segment of the cloud market. So, um, and yet, it, it, it's, a, it's a big enough opportunity to pursue. And you know, we spent some time uh, last month uh, with the vice president of um, AWS. And uh, they're 100% committed to HPC. Now, if you're a HPC uh, aficionado, they don't even call it HPC anymore, so they've invented a new term which they're happy which is high throughput computing. And so they're saying, well, HTC is going to be the new HPC. And uh, they spent just, you know, I, I, I'd say they get, this guy gave it a good go. He, he spent at least four hours going, HTC is the new HPC. And I was just looking around this audience going, who oh, is this guy kidding? I said, have you seen my machines? <laughs> I'm, never, I'm never giving it to you. But the, there, there is a, a big opportunity. But when, they, when the cloud market talks about high performance uh, computing, they're, they're mostly talking about what will be, in HPC terms, lower tier workloads, loosely coupled workloads that are uh, highly parallelizable. And um, while lots of people are using the cloud, the scale that HPC sites are using is actually a very, very small scale. Okay, um, so um, we uh, set up um, as part of our, our, our study was to really delve deeper into understanding um, the determinants and the barriers to cloud adoption, and understanding what the current scenarios were for HPC, but also cloud service providers, and then moving on over a three to five year period. So we're looking at what the determinants of cloud computing adoption for HPC are. Uh, critical issues that will impact HPC uh, in the next one to five years, and then five years plus, and then HPC in the cloud over the same period. And uh, and then uh, ideally, like we're leading to a solution, etc., trying to address these things. Now, uh, the interesting thing is when we talk about most of these things, we think about HPC and think technology is going to be a big part of it, and you know, saying migration workloads, etc. So, just you know, when we're dealing with, with you know, I'm an academic, so you know, you know, we're doing research theory around this. And um, you know, we have this thing called hot fit, which is you know, looking at human organizational and technological factors. And hot fit is a very good predictor for cloud computing adoption. Okay, so it, it was a model that we said, okay, this is a model that we can go to the HPC community and see, can we understand what HPC adoption would be like, what would determine? So, you know, there's a couple of things. So, so the human factor innovativeness, how. Uh, innovative, uh, a decision maker in a HPC site considers themselves. You know, so, uh, you know, the studies say that if the decision maker feels that they are personally innovative, right, they are more likely to adopt cloud computing. Okay? Um, IT and IS confidence. So they're saying, well, if our internal IT department or IS department, that, that, you know, that we feel that that's a core capability of our organization, you know, we're more likely to adopt cloud computing. Uh, and then, We've added in this one HPC comments. So when we interview HPC people, we say, well, look, the key thing is the HPC comments is the key driver. Because um, we will drive what the IT guy decides to do. So um, we, we had a, a, came from a number of items to test on that. And then we have technology. So one aspect is, is complexity. So whether someone perceives something to be a complex shift in technology, that, that uh, uh, impacts adoption. Uh, compatibility between HPC uh, and systems. So their existing infrastructure and uh, the cloud. So that's, a, that's a big part, and that certainly impacts migration. Uh, then obviously security and reliability is, is a big factor in the cloud. And then organizations, and these will be the traditional ones, top management, support, what kind of benefits, the, the indirect benefits other than uh, delivery of workload, cost savings. Uh, and remember, for most cloud computing use cases, cost savings is a, is a top line driver. Uh, and uh, and then uh, the resources to put these things in place. Now, anyone want to uh, put a, a bet on? Uh, and just you know, at the moment we have uh, about 130 respondents to this particular study. So anyone want to guess what the big drivers are? Will come on, go for it. Cost. I oh, think cost. Okay. Anyone else have any? So I'm I'm the interactive one. <laughs> I've been up since 4.45, trust me, at 3 o'clock, I'll be gone. 
So the awesome person, big drive. What do you think the big drivers for HPC adoption of cloud computing? Within the business, what's driving? First of all, do they know about it? Would be one which I would put up. Uh, the, the, the most that they are aware of it. Yeah. Okay, so everyone here is aware aware, aware of, uh, of of cloud. So they were a select group of people you actually. Uh, no, we we interviewed them and then we took out confirmatory bias on it. So there, there was a much larger group of people and then we drilled down. So. Yeah. Do I bring it back to the build versus buy argument? Uh, do more faster. With, with yeah. So so faster. okay okay. So interesting enough that you know if we take IDC and we go back. You know, it's, it's generally technology factors, cost factors, uh, organization factors that w around, you know, wh whether we want to go into the cloud, right? Uh, and, and the weird thing here is it, it actually is an outlier. So it, it didn't match up. So one of the big thing was uh, uh, it wasn't whether your organization perceived itself to be innovative. It was all about the decision maker. So if the decision maker had said, you know, I'm the driver of innovation, they were more likely to adopt cloud. So, so if they said, like, uh, you know, if you have a guy who says, I believe totally, in, 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 and I believe that I am innovative and I'm a change maker in this organization, and that's the key thing is that I'm a driver of change, you're more likely to adopt cloud computing for HPC. Um, right? Uh, <clears throat> interesting enough, it wasn't the ISIT conference, but if, if you had, if you perceived yourself to have very high HPC conference, that you consider yourself to be better than the average HPC uh, uh, site, okay, you are more likely to adopt cloud computing. Now that's kind of interesting because the, the, uh, the people who considered themselves better were, were large sites, uh, and very traditional HPC sites, but they were said, we're, you know, we know that this is something that we want to adopt, we just need to think about it. Um, none of the tech factors uh, were significant variables in terms of uh, predicting adoption. Um, and then, um, um, really the only thing was indirect benefits. So they saw themselves as saving time, uh, access to use of management, resource utility. So one of the big problems, and you'll see later on in the studies, is uh, accurate, you know, getting talent in HPC and cloud is a huge factor. Like just getting people who have experience in HPC, huge factor. Getting people who have experience in cloud, hard thing to do. Getting people who have experienced HPC in the cloud, nearly impossible. And a lot of the, the feedback was, uh, you'll see later on, higher education institutes don't produce the graduates that we need uh, for the industry. Uh, they don't produce HPC graduates. They don't pursue HPC in the cloud graduates. And, and so they see that as a, a sectoral problem. And that includes people in the university sector. So, um, so, that was it. so one of the things here is, um, um, it's slightly counterintuitive some of the problems because obviously when we're doing the research and we're in the cold face and we're talking to people, we know that we're encountering technology and technological factors all the time. And so moving the workloads to the, the cloud is very, very different. Making it parallelizable in a cloud context is a different type of, of activity. So um, we, the first thing we did is we drilled down even more. So we got a group and we used a Delphi study. A Delphi study is a, is a, it's a conference method, so basically you bring people through a series of phases where you try to get consensus on a, on a prioritize over an issue. So um, we asked them to look at consensus on issues in HPC first, and then we asked them to look for consensus on uh, HPC in the cloud. Okay. So uh, what this slide here is showing us here is uh, lack of parallel programmers and developers is the number one uh, issue that they see in adopting cloud called uh, programming hurdles with hybrid environments. And as you'll see later, these, these two things are, are, are linked. Um, uh, limited HPC expertise, uh, lack of access to high staff with HPC experience, high operational costs, application portability, and uh, difficulties related to scaling moving workloads to the HPC. So, so what we have there is a couple of, some of these we would see in normal cloud, like, so we have a migration problem. Okay? We, we, we know about that, but we now we have a specialized migration problem. But well, the interesting thing here is the human factors are very dumbed and the technology factors are there. And they see some of these <coughs> things changing. And when we delve into that more, they see some of the parallel programming uh, challenges and developers changing over time because they, they see that HPC, the HPC community is in a transition. And they think that five plus years, the HPC community, a, a portion of it will have moved to the cloud 
Uh, but to, to make that big step change, they're going to have to uh, converge on new programming uh, paradigms um, that are different than the existing ones. And that is a huge cultural challenge in the HPC community. Yeah, to, to yep. provide what you said earlier, which is the propensity to adopt HPC is largely a decision maker whether or not they consider themselves a Pers major personal state. innovator. Yeah. But on the other hand, are they aware of the things that you've just spoken about that could hold them back or be not allow them to proceed with HPC? Well, the, I, I, the, they, they are. I mean, I, the, the interesting thing, because you know, like, we've gone through, you'll see in the third study, then we get into, we're, we're able to give you quotes, and, and, and it's, the, it's quite interesting the human challenges in, in HPC. And, and you know, one guy was quite interesting who outlined the, ex, the extremity of it. You know, it's, it's not like there's lots of people and they have different views. It's people over here don't believe in the cloud at all. They say, hey, you know, they, they, there's, and there's a couple of different things about it. Is there's a thing about performance. So what is high performance? You know, uh, first of all, high performance is a moving thing. So what high performance is today and what high performance is in five years' time is very, very different. So the first thing will be, well, you're talking about high performance at this point. In five years' time, I expect for want of better, I expect X to sale. You know, I, that, that's where I'm looking at. And, and you'll always be behind what my, my moving target of what performance means. Uh, on the other hand, if you talk to the guy who's at the coal face, uh, for instance, we have people running national research centers, so they're, they're saying for 50, 60% of my users, this performance is good enough. For my top 20%, this performance will never be good enough. But caught up in the performance is, um, attention between uh, this. In the cloud infrastructure world, we, it's minimal interference. We don't want anyone interfering with the infrastructure. In the HPC world, it's, I want to see my infrastructure. I want to get in there. I want it configured. I, want, I, I, want, I like my machine. I want to show you my machine. Like, you know, if we go and visit an HPC site, they'll, they'll show you the machine. You know, we, you're in a situation where we take pictures of interconnects. Or it's a, it's, there's a lot of pride in it. In the cloud, your, your, your pride's about your work. You push it to the cloud. It's, it's processing your workload when you get an output. But I don't, you know, you, you, I'm not allowed to interfere with AWS. The AWS are never going to let me interfere with it. You know? And now there, there are people who are trying to change it. Like IBM have, a, have one site in Texas where they have bare metal as a service and, the, and, the, and they, they will let you interfere with, with, with that. But it's a trial site. And even at that, their idea of as a service is you'd have to commit to months a service and you, you have a minimum reserve. So it's, you don't get the cost savings. It's just saying, well, we can do something different here. But these cultural issues uh, are changed. And, and what's more is, it's a very divergent thing. You know, like you're, it would seem that you're, you know, you're either gonna specialize in supercomputers and, and the high performance machines at, at, at a very high performance level, uh, or you're gonna focus on loose couple. Now, uh, that's changing. You'll see some of the, the, the comments back to you. But, but you need a quite a strong decision maker then to make a big shift. So, and and, and that's, a, that's not easy because if you think about it, you know, even in the context of government funded centers or university centers, it, it depends on what, what your projects and funding is coming in. So actually some of the things on the university side, the funding is very different. They say in the US, ad hoc funding creates all kinds of problems for them because Maintaining and developing the infrastructure is very different. In Japan, totally different thing. They have a 25 year plan around supercomputer infrastructure, <coughs> and there's a certain amount of foreseeability about you know, it's, it's a national plan. In Ireland, we uh, have a condominium service, so all the universities share the service. Do you know what I mean? And, and increasingly, that's moving to, to cloud. Uh, we're just, it's, not, it's not a decision not to compete, it's just the scale of operations that we have, we're, we're never going to be with our biggest neighbor in the UK. So you know, that, that's just a reality. Whereas in terms of cloud computing, we're very competitive with the UK. Uh, and you know, we're, we're building more data centers than the UK. We've got some of the biggest ones in the world. So there's a chance that we're going to end up with the talent to do that. Um, but I'm going to come back to that in, in, in a moment. Um, and then when we look at HPC in the cloud, it, you'll see it, it, it's a totally different set of issues. It, it's, uh, data protection concerns, compliance concerns, uh, what we would call the, the trust and security bucket. Uh, and 
the trust and security bucket is interesting because it goes to the, the core of a couple of things and um, it's it's about ability so so the belief that the cloud is able to do things uh, and, and and this is the key thing is able to do things securely right and, and interesting enough without interference so, so the difficulty is the opaqueness of the cloud where we have uh, a chain of service provision where largely you can't see who's touching your different things, or possibly where your, your, your workloads are running if it's highly parallelized. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a concern, because in, in the HPC community, I'm able to see where everything is, I know who's in, I know the data and security management protocols around something, and particularly if you're in uh, biosciences, pharmaceutical research, you know, there's other uh, alternatives. The, uh, it's interesting with the oil and gas, for instance, you know, we said, uh, you know, they were saying, you know you hear data is the new oil, and then their point is, oil data is still <laughs> the new oil. <laughs> so they say, the data we have is incredibly valuable. You know, uh, money is not my issue. You know, if, I, if I thought I was going to get stuff crossed as fast as I use the cloud, but I can buy anything I want. So th their mindset is very, very different. It probably wasn't our best use case to be honest, <laughs> to start with the oil and gas. But, but the, these security concerns are interesting because actually, if you go and you look at marketing, and I, again, I was talking to AWS about this, and I said, you know, you really need to emphasize the security and the controls on, on your marketing. And he goes, yeah, well, we're seeing that more and more, but you have to understand, we, we have a position which is we're secure as it is, so we don't, we don't talk about it like that, because we don't feel we need to talk about it. But for the HPC community, people want you to talk about it. You know what I mean? And so, Study three is, is, was really getting down uh, and talking to people even more. So teasing out the, the issues down to it. We asked people to, very similar to what we did, with you guys, were, this is more of a check, but this is a bit more formally, what your top three uh, uh, critical issues are five years, uh, five years beyond. And we looked at cloud experts and HPC experts and we kept them separate. So um, if we look at HPC, uh, uh, the time, like all the people we talk to, uh, the education and training thing is, is a huge thing. Uh, not just talent acquisition, uh, talent retention. Uh, th this is a big thing. And and the things are, is they they have a belief uh, that that the universities aren't producing uh, students and graduates with the HPT experience uh, and expertise uh, that they need, and and those students have decreasing experience, which is a, which is a problem. But they also have decreasing interest. Where would you say the top three HPC centers of excellence are? It, how do you want to do that? Geographically, yeah. uh, do you want to do it? Geographically or, 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 or research centers, who's who's training the best caliber programmers today? It, 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 it's hard to say. The Japanese please, the Japanese are. The U.S. did the U.S. are in the U.K. Did the U.K. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 people are very uh, like like I, 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 within the, Europe. They might be willing to commute to London. Oh, I, I, I don't have the answer where you're going to get those people. <laughs> I, I, I think from from what it's worth, where we're seeing the when we talk to universities, I mean, the the culture of high performance computing in Japan is very different than other places we visited. I, I, it's a very different culture. You, you know what I mean? It's a, I, I, it, the, the best phrase I came up to, and even when I, I like, I went to visit NEC and a lot of the hardware firms, is they see it as a matter of pride. You know, which which, which is a very very different thing. You know, and interestingly enough, uh, the Chinese uh, are focusing. They focus a lot on Japan, and they focus on what what are Japan doing. Uh, uh, whereas in Europe, we tend to focus primarily on what the US is doing, and, and then with an eye over to see what's happening in China and India. But the, you know, the two growth markets are China and India. Um, uh, Japan is, is, a, is a stable but predictable market. And then you see just, uh, uh, you see more innovation maybe in, in, in the US. Uh, and, I, and I don't mean this as a disrespect in the UK. Uh, you know, the UK, it, 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 it's, it, it's just different. It's, it's a bit like Ireland. You know, we do a lot of different things, and so, even when you're looking at HP centers, HPC centers in, in the UK, you find that they're diversifying quite a lot more. So you, you'll find that, you know, uh, SCFC, you know, that they're talking about other technologies, or they're talking about, well, other types of things, right? You know, if you're in the US and you're doing HPC, 
you're, you're looking at graduates who are, are dual graduates. So you know, if you go to Texas A and M or Ross, uh, Rice, you know, they'll, they'll go. Look, here's a guy who's geosci he has a geoscience PhD, and he has a high performance computing PhD. Do you know what I mean that they're, they're looking for high power queries? We're not looking for that in the UK. You know, and and, and the other thing is, if you want to take a test, have a look and, and, and see who, who's doing. Like we have the same problem with cloud computing in one sense. Because if you go to universities in the UK, Ireland, states, you know, who has cloud computing centers? Right? There, there are actually not as many as you think. Right? And then if you think about HPC computers, HPC, we, we didn't talk about HPC labs, but actually, really the scale type ones are, when we go to somewhere, again, if you go to Japan, you, 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 you really see scaled up HPC units in um, universities. So you, know, you go to Tokyo Institute of Technology, they're, they're going to have very focused groups. You go to uh, University of Tokyo, very focused groups. What, what's like the European Open Science Club, for example? Okay. John's loving this right now because he's thinking, I'm ready to present for half an hour. What seems to be happening informally is that you have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of vendors or distributors who are coming closer to academia and saying, yes, you run your research and run your, run your use case, but uh, we're, we're, we're going to slowly get closer to you and to, you know, gradually increase the role of your, your job. You're going to go from something dedicated to a very specific specific workload just because they're the only people who have the HPC expertise and gradually make them you know, architects or, or, or help them roll out a center of excellence within vendors. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're, we're seeing that uh, off, the, off the record. We're seeing that in Ireland already. Okay. So if, in, 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 not in HPC, but I'll, I'll give you an example. In security right now, there's a very large, largest company. And, and literally, they, they've gone around to all the universities and said, uh, who's doing security research? I said, well, you either partner or we're just going to pay them. Whatever. And we stopped doing, uh, well, originally we had funding in IC4 for doing some security research. And every time we went through six guys, we bring them over, put them in, get them uh, set up in Ireland. And Palace, we used to just ring up every every two weeks and say, oh, have you just hired a guy there? And we go, no. And it's, yeah, it's on your website. Soon enough, within two weeks, something on the website, they'll have made an offer. And, and literally they'd be gone to France. <laughs> and, we're seeing this, and then we saw it like, put in the kind of Deloitte have 50 people now in their blockchain lab in, in Dublin, and about 17, 18 of them have PhDs. I don't have 17 PhDs in researchers in blockchain. I don't, I, to be honest, I have two. Uh, you, you, you know, that's, that's a big challenge if you're in the university sector. I think when you talk about HPC, though, I think it's very different. Like you know, different parts of the HPC world. Do you know what I mean? Like um, certainly seeing a lot of interest around high performance data analytics, and, and that's coming from the financial services sector. And that's where I think places like actually Dublin, London, Brussels, you know, you know the, the traditional financial services areas actually have an opportunity, and the universities around there have an opportunity because what you need is not just someone who's HPC, but HPC and finance. And, and actually, if you add in the big data, it's different. So the data flow engine uh, type uh, of use case where it's either genomics or, or financial service where you have high throughput data is, is quite interesting because you get a much bigger high, uh, performance boost. But uh, you know, there's different, you know, the, the, the market right now is slightly different. I'm going to continue on now, otherwise, uh, which will never finish. <laughs> but um, I mean, second, second thing, just looking at organization factors, very few um, HPC uh, users uh, cited organization factors. But there was, was a couple of interesting ones because uh, two in, in particular, uh, one was the uh, a very senior person in the HPC community who runs a, a, a national HPC uh, center in the, the US and, and quite senior person in the, in the UK, and, although not a British person. And uh, he said, well, the guy in the US is saying, well, market forces are eroding decentralized uh, HPC centers. And, and his point was um, that, uh, similar to what you're saying, vendors uh, and they are coming out with these new workloads, and, and, and the, the, the researchers are coming out with, with new workloads. And the difficulty is they're finding it hard to keep the infrastructure, uh, maintain the infrastructure, or develop the infrastructure to support the new demands that they're getting from their, from their user community. 
Okay, so that's one part of it. Uh, and then the second part is their funding is quite, it has moved from being very predictable maybe five years ago to quite unpredictable for HPC in the States. Uh, the, the second guy, the European guy, he was like, centralized funding is bad. So his, his point was centralized funding is bad uh, and uh, that this was a driver to go into the cloud. Now, the, the difficulty with not having centralized funding is the scale of funding needed to do the top tier type HPC. It, it, you just need that scale of funding. Um, and so there, th th this is not a big issue though, the funding. I, I would have thought the funding w w would have been a big issue, but actually people don't cite that that much. Um, technology factors which are, which are more important and uh, per per today is um, people saw the shift to heterogeneity and heterogeneous resources as a, as, as a big technology shift. And they see that as a big shift over the next five years and they see this as something that's going to keep going five plus years, okay? Um, and, and scalability too. And, and that scalability is also, both of those are related back to the software applications. Both the software applications within running the HPC but also to manage their workloads. And the reality is quite a lot of the software is legacy software or it's developed with a particular mindset in mind and it's not scalable as uh, new infrastructure is coming out in HPC but definitely not scalable in the context of cloud. Um, and their concerns then become around fault tolerance and liability around uh, these types of new hydrogenous resources as they're introduced um, and the need to converge on new programming models and approaches. Uh, and at the same time recognizing that it's a very fragmented community in, in that particular context. So, um, and, and against that there is some things around, you know, the, the, the big five changes, you know, whether it's social media or big data, you know, those things will affect H H HPC. But again, what was interesting is because even in our project we, we started off talking about energy consumption and power consumption. People aren't, aren't worried about that. Whether they're just not concerned about it or it's a low priority, it, it, it's not an issue. But for instance, if I go and talk to policymakers, and we've talked to lots of policymakers, you know, they're always concerned about energy consumption. Whether it's HPC or cloud, they're just going, Jesus, these things are, are have a bad footprint, you know? Um, just some, some quotes here. Um, like, th this is a bit worrying, which is the increasing complexity of uh, HPC applications and workloads, but combined with the talent pool might cripple HPC. And so that's a, it's an interesting thing is that the, you know, it's, the, it's the two forces coming together that are the challenging thing. Uh, and so th that's a call in some instances when we're talking to them is, is that, yes, if we could run our workloads in a much more simpler way or easier, we'd be able to, to, to get better utilization and we'd actually increase uh, output and innovation. But, but the fear is this complexity is a big problem. And, and, and this thing is there's a universal theme around collaboration that there needs to be, whether it's a good thing in your context, but, but there needs to be greater collaboration partnerships between academics, industry, and government over <coughs> setting this converged agenda and actually what the role of cloud might be in that. And so you can see here that software stacks um, will increase the capacity of the users and not just um, be, be there for the vendor to make money. Um, and then human factors, um, uh, a key part of this was, uh, I'm starting with this, but as you see with the technology, the HPC and the cloud adoption discussion, largely from the cloud computing community, they see this as largely a cultural issue. Uh, that most of the pushback that they get on adoption it, it is, look, we don't want to do cloud, cloud doesn't reach our performance. And then they say, <laughs> and this is universal, the biggest problem is the people who push back the most haven't really tried the cloud. And when they try the cloud, they haven't had a good experience because they haven't uh, modified their software to benefit from the cloud. And so the difficulty is, they're not trying it in the right scenarios. Now, I, I say this because we, we've tried three scenarios in Cloud Lightning, and, and uh, you know, I know one of them was a good scenario, the other two, I, I think if we had started again, we'd say, you know, there was better scenarios we could have had. But th that, that's an interesting insight that, you know, and, and if you have that tension, one side has one set of problems. Cloud, from the vendor side, it's, this is a cultural issue. Um, the technological factors, you know, Certainly performance is one. And, and again, when we look at the comments, 
a lot of it is this uh, debate about what high performance is and what high performance you need and what the 20% need versus the 80%. So there's a, there's, a, there's a huge tension there. And so it's not just whether the workloads are, are fit for the cloud. And this relates over here to the software licensing because HPC software vendors haven't adopted their, their, their licenses for a cloud environment. They're still trying to charge what they would for uh, a huge HPC site and say, well, you know, to pay us the same amount of money now and put it in the cloud. And so it's less about putting your software in the cloud, it's about the user putting the software in the cloud and using the cloud as a way to host it. So it's a very different type of dynamic. So this is kind of uh, related to workloads. And, and there's huge um, uh, concerns about communication speeds, whether it's data transfer or management, etc. So the communication speed is a big issue and scalability. And then there's security. And th this is very nuanced. It's, it's things like, I don't know where my, 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 uh, my, um, my software is or where my stuff is being processed. I don't know where it is in transit. I don't know where it's being stored. I don't know, I don't know anything about it. Right? So this is a, a huge concern. And that relates to IP confidentiality. Because quite a lot of the upper end workloads are related to high end scientific output and innovation. And they're worried about breaking contracts that they have with industry sponsors, etc. And then there's this concern that if it's in the cloud, it's more likely to suffer some kind of malicious attack than if it's uh, local uh, to, to them. Um, and many of these, when you look at the quotes that people give us in the interviews, these are really human factors and not technology factors. Um, and interesting, the cloud service, uh, the, cloud, the CSP experts, uh, and it, you know, these are lots of the people you, everyone knows and all the top tier providers, um, they, they just see HPC in the cloud being mainstream in five plus years. They recognize the cadence is not the cloud cadence. There's a, there's a, the cloud industry develops at a fairly rapid tick. You know? They recognize the HPC industry that runs at a much slower cadence. And it's not necessarily that they, they, they can't work together. It's just by the time that you decide to move to HPC in the cloud and then you modify your hardware or your software and then you get it to work and then you get it, it, it's a much longer cycle. And so some of this is a recognition that, well, this is a huge opportunity, but this isn't going to move at the same speed that we traditionally know, and this is going to take us a much longer time to, to crack, but we will crack it. Um, and then a lot of it is about the hardware and the software stacks and the cloud side changing to meet that demand. So there's a recognition that, you know what, Commodity cloud probably isn't going to be the solution in five plus years. There's going to be probably specialist data centers for HPC in the cloud that, that, that will sell. And, and recognizing that and communicating that's the point. Um, and this, the final thing is this tension between HPC workloads and commodity cloud pricing. And that, that Basically, at the moment, when you take your HPC workload and you take your, your piece of software that you have, it's probably heavily customized, and you put it into the cloud, it isn't cost effective. And many times it costs you more because it hasn't been uh, designed or built to, to exploit the benefits of the cloud or the infrastructure. And so the difficulty here is um, a lack of knowledge uh, on the migration side is resulting in ten, a, a, a kind of a negative experience, which then the, the software licensing doesn't enables one. They have a bad experience and it's, look, we tried it in the cloud, it costs us just as much to do then. If we did this for the uh, same work uh, load that we have over the next two years, it's more expensive. So the vendors need to, to think about, about this as well. So they need to think about, well, do we have the right pricing model, licensing model to encourage the HPC vendor, ISV market to, to adapt their software? Uh, and they move. Like if you take, we were talking, we were talking about Mathworks, and uh, you know it's commonly used. It's a, it's a lower tier HP. You know, uh, Mathworks in the cloud is. I think it's uh, you can have 16 VMs ru running it. Mathworks in AWS is 64. You, you know what I mean? So if you go to, to uh, Mathworks, you go MATLAB, and you're thinking, oh, this is great. Amazon's doing it four times faster. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and so the the reality here is the vendors are still working through what, what the solution here is. And they don't have huge demand at the moment, but 
but they see the demand, but it's going to take a long time to get there. Um, so maybe just think about our, our objectives, and John's going to really talk about uh, te technical objectives. We wanted to look at, uh, initially we looked at it and said, well, what would a next generation um, software stack or architecture for the cloud look like? That would be, uh, that could cater for HPC workloads, but would also provide the same benefits for, for any kind of data center operation. Um, and the idea then was, that uh, particularly we wanted to be able to exploit heterogeneous resources. In, in this case, we're talking about traditional CPUs, uh, many integrated cores, uh, which is an Intel uh, uh, quasi-cluster project, uh, GPUs and uh, DFEs, which are built in FPGAs. And so, uh, so we built out that 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 particular infrastructure with a, with a with a, a proof pro proof concept based on OpenStack, and uh, and then we where our belief was, you know, we were going to get uh, performance, cost efficiencies, and it's all built around self organization. So the key thing here is that it's putting together the, the most suitable configuration of, of resources to meet a particular workload. Right? Our three use cases, just you know, were uh, uh, the upscale module for uh, reservoir uh, modeling for oil and gas. Do you know what? Three years ago, I didn't even know what that was. So you know, the, this is a big improvement. Um, uh, so that's a, a project that's primarily driven by Stat Oil. Uh, we looked at genome processing. You know, we got a, uh, it's a high throughput data type of model. And then uh, ray tracing, particularly uh, uh, 3D image rendering for, for high end animation. Okay? And actually, one of the things that we, you know, so we built our, built our system. Um, John, John has gone through much pain to build that system. <laughs> um, but the interesting thing about that architecture and the simulator that we built, because one of the things that we want to do was. It, it, it's a project that's designed to be exploited at hyperscale. Uh, and, and we're talking about true HPC, uh, we meant true hyperscale. So we're talking about data centers um, that are talking about hundreds of thousands of servers operating in the cloud. So we had to build a, a, actually a simulator. So actually one of the outputs of the project was building a simulator, a hyperscale cloud simulator. Uh, and as I said earlier on, what's interesting about uh, that simulator is on all the benchmark tests, we're able to process and simulate uh, an order of magnitude in terms of more tasks and more nodes in that. So we're actually able to give a much better uh, view on uh, how the performance works. And the good, thing, the good news is it works. Uh, and so in 10 years' time, we'll have to show you something else. Uh, but um, so that's our approach. And our approach is, first thing was, could we uh, come up with a an approach that reduced complexity of provisioning of workloads in, in the cloud, particularly in, in this case is HPC workloads, um, that exploited heterogeneous resources, um, that we separated the concerns, there's a separation of concerns between consumers and the cloud service infrastructure. So the consumers, they don't want to think about uh, what resources are being used or where, so we wanted to get to the point where actually that your confidence level is so high that you were getting the best uh, performance that you could get. Um, want to reduce over-provisioning, so the common cloud model is in a data center we over-provision, therefore we have to deliver reliability, and obviously the problem there is we drive up our energy uh, costs, so we want to look at addressing that. Uh, so we want to, to have a very high resource utilization and at the same time uh, keep uh, energy efficiency at the same or better. Um, and then simplify that technical overhead for the end user, okay, and uh, at, at scale. And so with that, I will drive you over to John Mars. <laughs>